Lawrence Lessig once said, law and technology produce together a kind of creativity we've not seen before. On this note, I, Tanish Goel, on behalf of DM Hari School of Law, <laughs> would like to extend my warm welcome to all present here and those online. Our guest today will be enlightening us about how strategic use of technology will help the legal industry. We are honored to have amongst us our eminent guest speaker, CS Harish Jani, sir. Before we start the event, I request the dignitaries, our director, ma'am, Dr. Nilima Chandiramani, ma'am, and our guest, CS Harish Jani, sir, to light the lamp and commence the event. Thank you. I request Director Ram to please deliver the welcome address. Mr. Harish Jani, all assembled offline and online. A very good morning and a warm welcome. We are living in the age of the fourth industrial revolution, which is quickly <coughs> slipping into the fifth industrial revolution. The first one started with the steam engine. The second one was electricity, which led to mass production. Emergence of computers was the third one. And the fourth one, which is actually, or the current one, which is actually blurring the divide or the boundaries between the physical, digital, and biological world, is actually a fusion of the advances that we have made in artificial intelligence, robotics, internet of things, 3D printing, and genetic engineering. The pandemic has given a further impetus to the storm of technologies, which are happening at a whirlwind pace. And it is impacting our lives, our work, our society, industry, business, and services. Naturally, law is not going to remain immune to all this. It is These technologies are bound to propel law into the digital era, and they will change the entire landscape or the legal landscape, I should say. Now, questions such as, what will be the impact of artificial intelligence on administration of law? Will artificial intelligence and blockchain impact the administration of justice. Questions such as these are bound to come up. Already courts in USA and Cleveland, they are using artificial intelligence for sentencing purposes. I think personally that artificial intelligence or these technologies may not replace a judge, may not, but definitely they can predict the outcome of a case. So there will be a mapping of system and converting cases into machine readable codes. And that's what is important for you law students, the future lawyers of the country, to acquaint yourself with these technologies. And we are indeed fortunate that we are having someone 
as learned as Mr. Harish Jani with us today, who is well versed in these technologies. I'm sure, sir, you will even touch upon Kafka, quotes of future. But now they say even Kafka is an outdated idea. Something new is coming up. Every day there is a change. So Kafka, quotes of future. Asimo, laws of future. And Stapleton, legal designs of future. We need to acquaint ourselves with all this and much more. With these few words, I extend a very warm welcome to our guest speaker. And we look forward, sir, to learning from you. And I'm sure we can invite him again for many more such events. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. I now request Sohini, ma'am, to felicitate our guest. Sir, thank you for coming. I'm sure the students will really be enlightened. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I now request Shreya Kavde to please introduce and welcome our guest. Thank you, Danish. It is a great honor for me to introduce CS Harish Rani, sir. Harish Rani, sir, is a fellow member of the Institute of Company Secretaries of India and is in CS profession for more than 30 years. Sir is the founder and managing partner at Messrs. Harish Jani and Associates, practicing company secretaries, and also at UniVen Advisory, LLP, a startup advisory and tech education firm. Sir is a corporate consultant on governance, compliance, regulatory, and financial matters. Besides being bachelor's in law and commerce, Sir is also a fintech professional from SP Gen School of Global Management. In corporate consultancy, Sir is more focused into advisory of technology startups. Besides, Sir is engaged in extensive research and implementation of emerging technologies in legal tech, reg tech, and arbitech. Sir is also a part of the Association for Emerging Technologies, a non profit company. Sir is actively involved in spreading awareness and educating about emerging technologies and its various uses. At ICSI's, uh, at ICSI's National Conference of Practicing Company Secretaries, Sir had given a presentation on artificial intelligence in relation to the role of CS. Sir has been a speaker at various professional institutions like the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, Institute of Company Secretaries of India, SP Gen School of Global Management, Indian Merchant Chambers, and various professional firms. Sir, you are an inspiration to all of us. We welcome you once again. And enlighten us. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here before you and put my views on today's topic, emerging technology, strategic use of technologies in legal industry, that is legal tech. I'm thankful to the management of the Emory School of Law to invite me here and give 
my thoughts to and share with you people all <coughs> aspiring legal professionals and so new people will be also legal tech professionals i believe in time to come so i will try to start in like a different way uh, i think most of you must have heard about james bond they have been right from some 1950 or 60 lot many films have come ian fleming is the author and he has imagined that character of james bond one is not enough one of the film so that point was taken film name by katherine rogers uh, she is a tens state law school university's uh, lecturer and professor there and he is also for the vnrs international arbitration center head and she delivered a speech in 2019 at vienna on annual day international arbitration and she took up this topic she had also presented a research uh, paper on the international arbitration using this theme of james bond's movies one is not enough what james bond could have done if he would have practiced law had not been an actor so she said world is not enough because all the james bond movies has been at all the locations where international arbitration centers are there all the glorious locations of world and you will just look at it this is my disclaimer whatever platforms are there and technological claims are there if these are not supported by me these are used only for the <coughs> purposes of education and information and i would not make any claim okay so you will observe in various movies like the spy who loved me in the beginning only intro part when james bond was skiing on the ice enemy spy agent comes and try to kill him james bond uses a technology the spy sticks gets converted into cannon and he shoots down next you will find same movie he is going with a bike with a side car and suddenly any adversary is come his side car becomes a rocket propel bomb and he is the target and he, when he is eliminated same way in the car die another day there are various missiles on the front part of the car so he uses technology what technology we are using in our legal practice just telephone call or internet so that is the main points he has pointed out that we should use technology in our legal practice also now madam has already conveyed us uh, while discussing and briefing on the topic that we are rapidly approaching fifth industrial revolution now uh, you just i would like to add that first industrial revolution started then when we reached to the next industrial revolution which was when electricity and power was invented it took more than one century then later on the time gap between next industrial revolution was going was becoming thinner and thinner so by the time we were in the fourth industrial revolution we realized its full potential we are now approaching fifth industrial revolution as he said the lines between borders between the <coughs> biological physical and digital are now blurring so we will get finding metaverse the concept we will discuss at last so like that all these technologies now are not trying to replace humans as we were feeling and having fear in fourth industrial revolution now they are becoming complementary and helping humans in doing their work so there were a lot of tension to various people in the industry that amara job chala jayega what will be happen to us so now we will go through various technologies have a broad overview today and if then you people respond i would we would be having a next session also in future and having a deep dive into this technology next slide <coughs> so these are some of the emerging technologies artificial intelligence machine learning blockchain apis are application program interface i will just briefly describe artificial intelligence what is it it's a combination of two words artificial which is means not natural and intelligence means ability to perceive so taken together it is called artificial intelligence just little deep dive how the world was going so in 1956 in dartmouth in usa there was a conference of computer scientists and researchers they were thinking what we should <coughs> name this technology which can mimic the human and human beings behavior and have similar understanding so then after couple of days discussion they came to the conclusion we should tell it the artificial intelligence so right from that it has seen various cold storage and up and down 
and now since uh, chess uh, and uh, go uh, games uh, when then defeat uh, world uh, experts were defeated <coughs> it was taken as a uh, it has again found the boom and now it has found the application otherwise it was under its hype cycle only. then we go to application program interface it's a software which allows us to interact between two platforms like say for example you go to the restaurant the restaurant is having two stories you are sitting on the second floor and your teacher is on the ground floor in the basement how your order will be conveyed then bera will come he will give instruction he will write down your orders he will go to kitchen he will convey and again come with the order executed so you will get the plates same way the second example is a say you want to go travel somewhere you go to make by the platform there are various things available uh, buttons uh, airline hotels then taxi everything so how you will go you will select these flights you will do then connecting places uh, hotels will find out but you can find various airlines various timings everything but that platform doesn't store everything there it is having direct access to the relative airlines platforms so there is a application program interface which connects between two so it is api in uh, <coughs> So it facilitates interaction between platforms, and on real-time basis, it provides us information. Then comes blockchain. Blockchain, you all people must be familiar. It's a data. Uh, just move next slide. Next. Okay. Tell us, John. We'll go deep dive into blockchain a little later. Blockchain is a various blocks containing data relating to either digital assets or transactions on chain. So these are interconnected with the cryptographic encryption, which is called hash, and nonce, nonce, which is called a number only used once. So miners do that number to achieve that number, and they get reward in the form of a crypto or the better solution. So this is whole process of blockchain. But the data stored there is a uh, cannot be tampered with. It's a time step. So all this there, there's what a utility. When we go into it, we will discuss. Next is IoT, Internet of Things, means connected devices. So all these connected devices are sensing, like our mobile. It can sense temperature and other lighting. Uh, same way, we have got a small smart gadgets and other things. So all that senses they are connected with internet and they pass on the <coughs> information or data whatever they fetch to some place. Uh, there is a big data. Big data means a huge collection of data. We use various gadgets, we do various activities online. All that creates data. Data means the information about something. So all that information is collected and is gathered somewhere. So it is called big data. We will go into the tech also. Then AR, VR, MR. There is an augmented reality, virtual reality, and mixed reality. Three concepts basically. So augmented reality, when you in your gadget. You get something and put into this environment, like a in furniture store. You have put in chair and you put in your house where it will fit, like that. So it is augmented reality. Virtual reality, you have some variable and get lost in that world. So you feel you are in that universe. So it is a virtual reality. Mixed reality is of both of it. <coughs> there is a robotic program application. Today we will not touch upon it. There is a concept of digital twins. Is a twins is a technology where physical asset or some physical now we see one human being they are trying to convert it to that. So you can have that digital replica through Internet of Things sensors types. So it creates entire same environment and everything about that physical uh, physical asset into digital world. So how it works will come into that also. Then there is a regulatory technology. When the tech, these old technologies are used for regulatory purposes. It is called rector. So what happened in two thousand eight financial downfall, global financial downfall? Various banks and financial institutions, USA, European countries, and other developed countries in Far East suffered a lot. Various banks <coughs> were uh, already had to be closed down, and because of that, uh, prior to that there were uh, property and mortgage bubble, and because of that there was no control of government regulations. But after that. Government had to suffer to a lot and take a hit in again beginning of the economy. So 
all the regulators in various countries put a <coughs> severe restriction and reporting requirement. It was so vast and very much time bound, and non compliance was having huge penalty and sometimes imprisonment also on CEOs of that particular bank or financial uh, companies or institutions. So they were required to <coughs> comply strictly. And because of that, uh, and because of uh, that financial difficult, all we are facing financial difficulties, they were not having even enough resources to make invention to how to do that. So the startup economy came into life. So startup started inventing on various technologies and they put it into use. <coughs> because of that, uh, using that uh, various compliances started. And when you apply all these technologies in compliance and regulatory compliances, it is called tech. There is one more part of that, it is called, it is called soup tech, means supervisory technology. When uh, regulatory authority uses the technology to see your compliances, it is called soup tech. So it is both way. So now in Ministry of Corporate Affairs website, uh, they are going to introduce uh, in their entire portal version 3 with that. Uh, artificial, they are going to use it artificial intelligence also. It will pull data from your own system and will verify whether your file balance sheet is correct or not, will match, and will, if there is anything, it will automatically raise a notice for that non compliance. So, this will shoot that. 5G, all you know, <coughs> once the internet speed will be high, we can do a lot of miracles. Ah, so, AI, artificial intelligence, we see, is actually umbrella name for various technologies. Within that, there is a machine learning, deep learning. Machine learning is a branch of artificial intelligence under which machine is able to learn from various, there are two other sub part of machine learning. One is supervised and the unsupervised. In supervised machine learning, you provide data, historical data to the machine and based on which it runs and then based on new circumstances or new data comes, it interprets whether it is this or not there. So say for example, uh, we give a lot of pictures to machine with a computer vision of car <coughs> from various angles. It will learn this is called car from front side like that, or wheels, doors, and other things, this type of stuff. Then it will learn from other pictures. We say this is not car. So we say auto rickshaws picture, two wheelers picture, truck pictures, and then this is truck, this is various things. Then it will learn, it is all stored. Now you put this on Tornaka. And although there will be a physical manual toll collection, this camera will be put and with AI connected machine learning process, it will be installed at the computer processing center. So at the end of the eight hour shift, it will decide and automatically tell you with a toll collection how many cars have come, how many trucks have come, this was the red, what should go in the collection. If the person is not collected, then the difference will be identified. So this is a practical use case. Deep learning is a thing in which uh, neural networks, artificial neural networks, like our brain, we have some... Hey, five minutes, you may. Okay. We learn from our experience, like when we were a child, our mother used to take us for a walk, she was teaching us with a child, one step by another, but slowly we learn ourselves and we started running, now nobody wants a mother's help to walk or run. So like that, Neural, artificial neural network also understands of its own and do the processing. So it has been a lot of changes and now disruption in the industries. So NLP is a natural language process, one of the branch of artificial intelligence, which is one very much importance from us from the <coughs> legal practice point of view. Natural language processing means computer's language is important. What we human beings speak, maybe any language, but after all, it's a natural language. So how computer can understand? When we, uh, you must be knowing like Alexa, CD. So when we give command, it's our oral talking to them. It understands, converts into code. You say to uh, Alexa, play this music. So your switch command, it is transmitting into code, goes to the server of the Amazon. It will search their Amazon Prime video, some song, or you have ordered. It will again fetch back and play there. So this is a natural language processing. Same is uh, what uh, real work, writing or reading. And natural language generation is based on the natural language, whatever data is available in writing, it will create a table and uh, generate natural language. Natural language understanding is the understanding what I explained like CD will understand the things. It is called NLP, some branches are NLP. 
Next one. So now we will come to one technological trend, generative adverse area network. It's a branch of uh, artificial intelligence using which you can do various photoshopping of uh, picture and like that. Uh, of green like that. Look at these images. Now tell me which Obama here is real. To help families refinance their homes, to invest in things like high-tech manufacturing, clean energy, and the infrastructure that creates good new jobs. Anyone? The answer is none of them. So here you have seen <coughs> using this technology, generative adversarial network. Any false imaging and other things can be created. Even videos can be created. Even in present uh, Russia versus Ukraine war, they are claiming a lot of uh, false news are being spread. With this thing. How it can be used in corporate espionage and other places? We have been seeing this type of news. Any persons, including seven Hindi by Indian Navy sailors, arrested for espionage to Pakistan. Navy man's Facebook after 11 person are arrested for Pakistan, like that. So they are honey trap to honey trap, or anyway, they try to trap the people from whom they want to extract information. Uh, in this, uh, there is a two networks are working. Both are neural networks, as I explained. One is uh, having a copy of some original figure, it, uh, another try to copy it. So it is called adversarial. Other will observe it and say, no, this is not correct. Try to improve open, try to improve. It becomes so fast and finally you come to the real, almost real like imaging, image or either view. So it is generated like that. So it is called generative adversarial network. The other adversarial network goes on constantly advising. You are not yet perfect, you are not yet perfect. What we do. It creates a lot of uh, problems in intellectual property rights and other ways. Mm -hmm. I will show you. So click here. This one. These are the full body models created with AI. Created by a company, that is something called Green. Search in your mobile, there is a website called this person does not exist.com. Same again, every two to three seconds, imagines the new face of a human being and generates it. It goes on generating. Same way, there is one more website which face is real. Constantly, it will generate two new faces. You have to click on the real picture with the real spot. So when we do deep dive in future, I will do uh, show you all practicals of that. And that way, it again further goes on learning. This is high level neural network, like human brain. And how it creates the face and imaging from your all postings on Facebook and all other social media, wherever photos are available in life. It collects everything and based on that it images. Sometimes it may happen that some celebrity like some part of Amita Bhattal, some part of some sport person like Ronaldo is mixed up and created. If he comes in like looking like me, what will be the IP implication and property is right. Personality. <coughs> so on the technology is a digital twin, where IoT sensors are used in a big way. Uh, first we show, uh, see the car. Volkswagen, now even Hyundai, I-20 was created as model using the same technology. 
digital replica of the car is created, and with various sensor, it is in almost similar parameters. Is the physical modulus? If you want to create a new car, say for example, Maruti want to create whether it's a model of Swift or a, a other some car, and you want to make it a seven seater, say you develop Antigua, how it will do? If you go on creating physically and running on the road, it will take years and years. By the time it's computer may come to the new model, it will be a brand new competition. So how it happens? They go on changing year only parameters. Maruti slogan is that it's not a PA. So they will try to create more fuel efficient car. So they will go on beating its engine on digital world. Even tires and other things, gear ratio. So if you want to create a car which is a more driver enthusiastic car, so it will be tuned, engine will be tuned like that. Otherwise, for fuel efficiency, it will be low tuned. All these parameters can be set there. Car can be run for hours on the digital world only. And then finally, you can arrive and then crystallize the model, please, and put the one prototype on the road to run. Same way. <coughs> Boeing 737 Max, this with a couple of accidents few years back, and the EC of uh, United States banned all the flights of this model. And it was order to find out the fault in their software and was asked to <coughs> again put the revised things. Had they done it for uh, physically, it would have taken years. They came back again in two years in English technology. We have seen uh, now in the sixth generation prototype, they are developing of VA by VA systems. Using digital technology, a fighter plan. Language, local language, local language. So this way production can be facilitated. You can comply with environment pollution control laws by controlling the pollution control levels from Bharat from to Bharat 6 or whatever. All these compliances and regulatory compliance can be done. This technology also plays a role in now creating outdoors for metaverse. This is helpful in all these regulatory compliance, smart asset management this is one of the UK's bridge of which photos are taken and converted into digital using laser technology and regularly the bridge level deterioration due to wear and tear is uh, monitored and whenever repair is required, then we can do it immediately and prevent this yeah. Now we come to the chatbot technology. Chatbot is one of the NLP based, natural language processing based uh, technology where you can provide some experience to your users. Users or customers like that. So, using this technology, these are the benefit. You can respond immediately. You can be available 24 by 7. <coughs> it gives conversational experience to the customers or the party. Even in legal field, you can provide your clients the experience. You can avoid a frequent repetitive phone calls from your clients asking them, Is that a question? That word can immediately answer. What, how to build a chatbot? We just have a glimpse of this. You have to decide the purpose for which you want to build a chatbot. Where your chatbot will do? The platform where you want to put it. Then, what is will be the bot's personality? Like this, there are various chatbots. What is your chatbot's conversational structure? And what tools you want to use to build your bot? Say, for example, I have written a legal bot for company that it is now available on. Uh, There are others like uh, Billy Bot, Lisa now they are much. Do not pay is one in a very much famous in UK. They are uh, using that chatbot. You can do online. Uh, if you have uh, charged by for wrong parking work, then you can uh, file a case online only using this chatbot and you may get a refund back. Now, these are the normal chatbots. If you must have face chatbots while going to some bank side, may I assist you? You feel more many things they don't know. Now, what is the future of chatbot? I will show you.
Okay, this is the website of Solbosis. It's a subsidiary of uh, IBM Watson and it's a New Zealand based company. There are a couple of companies in New Zealand uh, which develops uh, digital humans. These are the features of Fedbots. Video for that video. But these are all already <coughs> used by various companies in Europe and USA, which do work as assessment or teacher as education. It's like the Good morning. Hi there. I'm Rachel. Hi, Rachel. I'm Shant's name. How's it going? I'm doing well. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. This is my first time in New York City. Really? Where are you from? Um, have you ever heard of a place called the Internet? <laughs> I guess I spent some time there. Well, I've lived there all my life. I'm a creation of soul machines. I can see you and hear you. And what makes me different is that I can respond to your emotions. I guess you could say I'm putting a human face on artificial intelligence. Wow. So what brings you here? I am working with IBM Watson to deliver knowledge across a vast range of topics. My current interest is helping people find the best credit card for them. Really? I've actually been looking into credit cards recently. What a coincidence. Really? Yeah, but it's really overwhelming. You know, there's so many credit cards out there, so many offers, options. I don't really know what to do. Oh, Shantanu, I completely understand. It can be a lot to figure out. Would you like some help? Sure. Um, I'm looking for a card with no annual fee, a low APR, and something where I can get the maximum amount of points. OK, so you're looking for a points card. I can definitely help. Is this for personal or business use? Uh, personal use. And will it be your first card? Uh, no, I actually have a few. OK. Do you mind if I ask about your credit score? An estimate could help me narrow down the options for you. Uh, well, I'm at this audience, but it's 750. Just keep it between you and me. Excellent. You will have some good options. Since you said you're looking for a low APR, does that mean you typically carry a balance or that you pay it off every month? I really try to pay it off every month. All right. I have the perfect card in mind for you. It has no annual fee, an APR of 6.5%, and it comes with triple points on all purchases. Oh. How does that sound? Mm, sounds nice. How do I get started? Wonderful. I can transfer you to an agent to complete the application. Would you like to do that now? Yes, please. Before I do, is there anything else I can help you with, Shantanu? No, you've been great. Thanks so much. So these are all interactive chatbots. They can interact with you, read your mind, your needs, what type of card you prefer, what are your appealing sectors according to your particular card. This type of chatbot can be applied to other applications also, like a teacher or whatever other use cases. But this is going to be a feature of chatbot, only being employed in European countries. And this can be used as an avatar for metaverse also, for it, anyways. Next one. Are you? So now we come to big data. Is one of the big data in itself is a not a technology. It's a problem. Data is, a, as I said, information about anything, any object or person or whatever. So, what is big data? Through various our uses nowadays by smart gadgets, internet, social media, whatever, we play video. So, every information goes to net or whosoever is providing it. 
they collect the data. You download some app, they will say these conditions you don't read even say yes, yes. They will collect all the data from your mobile. So they collect the data and they analyze it, do data structuring and find out the insights from that and then may give some input to somebody else using your data, your personality everything. So how it happens, say for example, in one particular area there is Amazon store. It is provide catering to a particular area. I'm talking about the USSA. So many people in that area are having a Alexa like that. So they know using your smart devices like fridge. So which juice is taken, how many times, who is drinking, which brand is being used. They will uh, come to know to see or some other projects that people here are suffering cold. So in their store, there will be now more demand for that particular medicine and they will discontinue the discount on that. So pricing policy, everything can be decided. Basic decisions or business decisions can be also decided on that. So that can, uh, can be the mis, uh, big data, so various business insights. So we know big data from bytes to megabytes, terabytes, petabytes, like that. So this is a size of various big data storage facility. There are four V factors volume, big data is a very huge volume and we cannot process it with our present computer system. We need a special tool like Hadoop and Apache Kafka and like that. Then there are various varieties of data. Depending upon the source from where we collect, there may be a videos, there may be photos and voice and other things. Then veracity and velocity. So veracity means various variety and the speed at which they come data. So depending upon that, there are various tools to be selected for processing of a big data. So one thing is a Hadoop, you must have heard of it, Hadoop. Hadoop is mean batch processing. When there is no need to process it real time release, Hadoop do a breakup of the entire job of the data. Say, for example, I have got a thousand page book and I want to find out how many times a particular word has been used. If I do myself, I will be going on going for hours. If I distribute between 100 people, then I can get within a few times, a few minutes or like that. So similarly, Hadoop will work processing in batch. But it will take a longer time. It cannot do immediate process. There is an Apache Spark. It will in a lightning speed. But then processing cost is also there. Hadoop is a little bit cheaper. And, but like a credit card data processing, when you do some payment through your using your credit card, the, your bank or credit card provider what has a data history of your set. Normally, what is your spending limit? For which purpose you do spending? Which cities you spend? What type of spending? You all data is there. When something you spend, say somebody has spent your car for some unusual purpose and unusual amount, it will only immediately trigger through using this technology. And it will send you SMS, this card is being processed for this payment. Are you or not? Then go ahead. So this is real-time processing. Same way there are different things for MongoDB and other things. We will, when we go for a separate session, we may do learning. Then the basic problem is turning big data into value. As I said, like the, how big data can be processed and what insights we can get from big data for our use purposes. Now we come to the blockchain. As I said, it's a time series of immutable record of data that is managed by cluster of computers, not owned by a single entity. It's uh, on the network of computers and data once entered cannot be <coughs> tempered with and when it is entered, where the work is done is a timestamp. So that data may be either related to some digital asset or some transaction and having cryptographic encryption so you cannot temper with it. So how blockchain works? These are the blocks and through that has value here below. Previous, this is called Genesis block. This is the very first block on the blockchain. It has got a 0, 0, 0 previous blocks hash. Then comes next, 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 when previous blocks are interlinked. So if you change some data in there, the value will automatically change and the entire chain will break. So you cannot temper with the blockchain data. Uh, I will show you how it happens. <coughs> This is a live demo of a blockchain. Now, I push that for data. Could be that. See, now the has has changed. So, because of that, this all change the color. 
So the data sequence sequence has broken. So previous has been got next, which is and entire broken. So then you can't temper the data. Thank you. Blockchain has got various use cases, automating banking, financial sector for charity donations, how it can be monitored when we, we can discuss only focusing on blockchain, we can go on this. And I will give some illustration while discussing on smart contracts. Yes. <clears throat> the smart contracts are the contracts which are built on blockchain, mainly on Ethereum blockchain. Popularly, because Bitcoin blockchain doesn't have that smart contract capability. Smart contracts are the coding of our normal physical contracts. <clears throat> and it is having triggers of execution either upon happening of some event or on a lapse of time. Say, for example, I want to travel for a Mumbai to Dubai for a particular matter. By reaching in time, then Dubai is important because I have fixed up everything at a particular time. If it doesn't happen and time is in it, I will lose my entire trip money and my time. So I want to insure it. So for ensuring that, if it is on a smart contract, insurance company will issue along with the ticket by smart contracts or insurance coverage. And once uh, I go to the airport, the Director General of Civil Aviation's uh, then linkage with the airport, whatever airport may be, will immediately record the what time my flight has taken off, what time it has landed there. So that uh, output of time, when my flight has landed there, that is called a oracle, it is third party information, which input comes into blockchain to third party input. And it will confirm that flight has landed this time. If the smart contract says if my flight is uh, late by more than 15 minutes, I should get this compensation. Then those will automatically trigger. And there are bank account uh, mandates are given in the smart contracts. Then automatically my account will get created issues from this account will be debited for that money. So there is no third party involvement. There will be no dispute. These are various use cases of smart contracts in mortgage, supply chain, real estate market. Employment, insurance, insurance for example, like this. You have imagination and you can find a sub, uh, use cases in there. We we'll discuss a couple of use cases. Next one. These are the smart contracts, three main basic points. One is text. You have to have an entire contract in text format. The logic, there is a data consists of various parties, names, and other things which they want to have on it. What are the purposes of the contract? Then third is the logic. Smart path in, in terms of what will be triggered when it will be triggered. That has to be coded. So that constitutes a basically smart contract. Now, how smart contract works? Say there is a wine merchant who is selling wine to a wine buyer which is in some other country. It has to be transported by sea. The quality, to maintain the quality of wine, it has to be stored at a continuously stored at a particular temperature in transit. Had it been a simple contract, what would have happened? That wine merchant will sign a contract with the wine buyer and it will be transmitted. Once it is rich, in between, there is a higher temperature, wine will get spoiled and then there will be a dispute and there may be no payment or litigation. If then what happens if it is on smart contract? Wine merchant and wine buyer will send in terms and conditions will convert the contract into smart contract. Then there will be very trigger points that it should be maintained at 25 degrees centigrade for this. How it will you monitor? There will be IoT sensor. IoT sensor in the truck, transportation, or seat, wherever, till the time of landing and taking delivery, it will be monitoring the temperature and it will be constantly communicating to the buyers that what happens. <coughs> Buyer will be continuously monitoring what is the temperature. So once it is arriving, Say it is arriving with the same temperature and quality is maintained, it is okay, transaction is done. If it is below that, then smart contract will automatically trigger the penalty clause and accordingly money will be deducted while before making payment to wine merchant. Say 20% discount or 40 percent whatever penalty clause is there, that will be triggered. Accordingly, less amount will be paid. So <coughs> litigation can be avoided. <coughs> Still more complex example of a smart contract. Min farm example. 
in setting up a wind farm, windmill farm, there are various aspects available, uh, required, like for construction of windmills, construction of a concrete basis, and other things. And then finally, you have to decide what will be the completion period and when it will be <coughs> power will be started sent to power grid network. <coughs> Accordingly, all the contracting has to be done beforehand. So now, if there is some problem, if all these are put on smart contracts, what can happen? All the time frame and other things is given. So if some due to some reason construction is delayed or a, a smart uh, this thing is uh, wind farms, wind and turbines are not constructed in time, then what will happen? That it, the uh, once upon learning about that likely delay, the smart contract will automatically communicate with the other later on stage smart contracts like power grid. And they will come to know that this is likely to delay. And accordingly, they will also not sell it for the electricity. <coughs> and whatever delay for delay, there are consequences that will also trigger open. Next. <coughs> This is the website of uh, Accor Project. It's an NGO which uh, provides for uh, legal ready made templates for how to convert our uh, regular agreement into smart contracts. You can go into that detail uh, and uh, have your entire detail uh, through inspection of this site and come to know how smart contracts closes are to be framed into uh, from you know, our regular contract to smart contracts. It's called Accord Project. Yes. So, role of legal professional, either it broadly, although I am not a full legal practitioner, I am in corporate co-advisory, but broadly we can divide litigation and dispute litigation and non litigation. Non litigation, consultancy, compliance, drafting, legal research, and other area where any other party can also come. But in legal practice, for courts and other things, as per the this bar council's regulations, only lawyers can appear. For tribunal and other professionals are allowed, they are not possible. So these are the broad category. Under uh, litigation, various courts, judicial authorities, quasi judicial authorities, arbitration, dispute resolution. Nowadays, arbitration, dispute resolution is becoming more <coughs> technology driven. And for other areas, we will see non litigation also consultancy, compliance, drafting, legal research, how the technology is applied. <coughs> These are the benefits which low bomb C AI can gather. It helps in saving time. Your repetitive and one work can be avoided. Then it allows earlier and more accurate risk assessment in advance. It reduces the water burden of repetitive work, produces high quality work, etc. There are the various areas in which technology can be applied. Research, due diligence, document request management. It can predict legal outcomes, arbitration, discrimination, settlement, legal drafting, transaction advisory, KYC, and client onboarding. We'll go through some platforms of this. So, in legal research, let's talk about this. So in foreign platforms also, only because they are more advanced than Indian platforms. Clark is there a software for legal research? See, in India, there is a program because of uh, 
in past, uh, all the cases were uh, just having physical printing. So right from brief submissions and uh, even folders and judgments were physically available, but were scattered, not fully compiled with them like that. So Indian companies still uh, they were finding it difficult to digitize and then put for use for machine learning processes. So they, we were not able to get inside. But in foreign countries, it was a uh, very poss much possible right from the beginning, they were the uh, legal history and things are digitized. So they are able to develop it with a very high level of machine learning. That was unsupervised. We are using neural network, it is giving full insights. It can go through thousands of cases and analyze and give you insight based on your brief that whether your particular citation is a plaintiff favoring or dependent learning. And if you are a plaintiff, if it is dependent learning, please replace this and like that. All suggestions will come. So when it is analyzing the arguments and giving you the score based on your brief. But you want to hear what you think. This is the brief entirely. You have to upload into software. And it will create a report. It will process within a few minutes and will give you a full report. So based on your arguments in the brief, it will say analyze. It is a fair. You are getting 70 years for out of 100. Then your know, drafting level is a big 69. Then there was suggested in arguments, eight actions are suggested. In drafting, there are suggested two actions. Context is very strong, then we will verify score, and six actions are suggested. Overall, you are given fair will analysis points. Your score is 78, and it's total action points are 60 for each other. <clears throat> then argument they analyze very strong on word basis. Then you can go further deep in that and you can have on board ground what is ever. <laughs> then outcome of cited cases, why it is weak on what basis? If you can you can give other so this is the breakdown of your arguments. You can have a deep dive on strongly supported what basis what case. Then accordingly, we do not ask on this appeal that traffic is where what is. They will be noting which case is cited wrongly and why. So the case is <laughs> These are the action items which case we have cited. So they are suggesting double check the citability of the following cases which are uncitable in California state courts. If these are cited in California requests, it will not be acceptable or just may have a, because they are also no. By analysis, this particular judge has given judgment in these cases against the matter in similar cases to you. So it gives full insight. And based on that, you can also decide whether to keep your matter in this particular court or to oh, for some other case or move the This insight, vulnerability of cited cases, how and it's a very deep learning, but uh, we are just in the Same way for everything, supporting arguments, they are saying what you should do, how it can be done, meaning which, how it should be drafted, what are the suggestions in your brief, how the wording should be, everything they are giving. Quotations. So, winning briefs lack fewer quotation errors than losing briefs. Quotation errors include missing, change, or edit languages. Even for citation, how you cited the same case, but how it should have been cited, that also it gives you perfect. So, all this happens in a few minutes. Instead of you may be knowing that once uh, junior goes as a any in the lawyer's office, can you put the files to go through all the uh, reporters of cases and going through, going through for hours and hours or days and days? Then he will cite some similar cases and find out. Here it gives in minutes. So this is a machine um, analysis, machine learning. So are we doing that in India here? No. India now, Anupatra has started, but initially there was a lot of difficulty because all courts' cases. <clears throat> judgments and orders were not available on the legal form. They were in vernacular language. How to convert it in machine readable form? That was also a problem. Converting first into English or some language. And then again, that uh, 
printing was so not clear, easy one. So how to make them? They have to do physical entry and now they are coming. I have been following Manupatra also last three years. So now they have come out and software are available, but not to this age. So this is for a legal research. Here are Indian companies, Litiquest, Kesmine, and Manupatra. Litiquest, uh, even uh, Mr. Ramji Ramalani had invested in this startup. Then predict legal outcome. Uh, let's the legal analytics platform. It does prediction of your case based on the similar cases and which court you will go, which are the brief, based on brief, which are the matter of your case, what is the chance of your success and everything criteria it will analyze and tell you which are the courts, which are the judges, and then it will review you recommendations. It is called recommendatory engine, which analyzes doing this is all big data analytics, thousands of cases, thousands of judges, their behavior. Sometimes it happens even in IOC, a particular judge may not like a particular type of argument. And if your a counsel has uttered that thing, then the case will get that way. So these are <coughs> predictive analytics. Lex Machina has got uh, this particular software for that. You can uh, yourself browse and find out how. This helps us in taking business decision as a legal practitioner or in a corporate, you as a in the legal department, you can advise your seniors or uh, your clients that whether it is advisable to go for this or that. Whether you take a business decision or not. Uh, article post drafting. These are the AI power left. AI power drafting tools automatically drafts. Articles. We created what we call a deep understanding algorithm, which allows a machine to take any keyword and research and write a completely unique and intelligent article about that keyword. This type of technology has never been available before and is available only at Article Forge. So now I'm going to show you live how this deep understanding algorithm allows Article Forge to write completely unique articles in under 30 seconds. I'm going to start the timer now. I'm going to have Article Forge write an article about car insurance, so I entered car insurance as my keyword. I'll now click create article and Article Forge has started running. You can see that Article Forge has begun researching car insurance. Just like a human, it searches across the entire web, reading every article it can find as it gains an understanding of everything there is to know about car insurance. Using what it's learned, it's now automatically writing its own unique article about car insurance. Since it's finished, I'll now click through to the article, and as you can see, there it is. I'll pause the timer. You can pause the video yourself if you want to read the article it wrote. Trust me, you'll be blown away at how high the quality is for a completely automatically written article. I'll now copy the article and paste it into Copyscape, and as you can see, Copyscape returned absolutely zero results. This article is 100% unique, complete with images and videos, and is ready to be used on one of your websites, and we still had time to spare. Now that we've shown you how Article Forge uses its deep understanding of There's a lot of neural networks which understand the entire thing. Some of you must have heard about GPT-3 by Elon Musk AI company, OpenAI. It generates three trained transformers called transformers. Transformers are based on neural networks. They are trained on the border and languages particularly. And they understand every context like a human being's mind. And based on that, they do it. But it has fast access to entire data on network, internet. And they find out relevant topics, then filter it, filter it, and comes to that and with the data. <coughs> One is fully uh, Others are ARIA, it's an LNG platform, uh, it's natural language generation. Based on whatever report you create, it will generate the data based on which you can have your graph and explain what is the plan. There is a page freezer platform uh, which helps in creating evidence based on what has happened in net, what was posted, when, and that can be brought out and produced as evidence in the IRA. IRA is uh, also contract review and management agreement. Uh, for agreements creation, finding out the context uh, from thousands of agreements. In lawyers and solicitors' office, 
particularly old offices, they have got their standardized agreement for every matter. And if uh, some person has to find out and draft a new agreement, uh, they want to have a particular clause, say, take over. But take over matter where it is referred in so many agreements, they can find out immediately and then take a <clears throat> that clause. Its understanding is uh, on the same way like you do search on Google, but it is like a steroid on that. So that it understands to full extent, even that para is not headed with the takeover, it will go through the entire agreement, find out the contract that this para means the takeover part, it will pull out and show you this should be the fit case for the type of agreement you want to draft. And for e-discovery and due diligence, there are platforms available. Litigation finance, it's a new area now emerging in foreign countries particularly. This legal pay is an Indian company and legal is a foreign company. So there are foreign legal This is a new business area in uh, foreign countries, USA, you know, they will do litigation funding. India, uh, because of a contract act provision, support and maintenance, it's a doubtful whether it is legal or not. But in foreign countries, it is allowed. And uh, because of that, uh, what they do, either through crowdsourcing, uh, say, for example, in USA, somebody, a uh, police says, uh, hit some person, he was a poor guy. Now you want to find a case against uh, government for police hitting and he doesn't have money. So they we can put in uh, internet, social media and collect the fund to such type of organizations. And then with that they can fight. Or alternatively in corporate, when you, your company doesn't have that much money. There are litigation finance venture funds also in foreign countries where they can hit some way, profit sharing is so the success really. They do funding. But it is Ill illegal in India, no? In under under Section 23, yes, 23. Temperty and maintain. Right. But they are using all these technologies. What type of finance they are doing? Bankruptcy, funding, and litigation. <laughs> then there are platforms for client onboarding, being KYC for NPFC, banks, SignZ, AI Expert. These are Indian companies, Indian technology startups. Can tell me if you want to take a break. To take a break or be complete? No, complete. 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 So now we come to the emerging technologies in dispute resolution and mitigation. <coughs> Basically, AI blockchain are the basic pillars on which uh, mitigation is being used for technology. Mitigation uses a technology. There are three types of uh, litigations uh, now through alternate dispute resolution, online dispute resolution, and arbitration. <coughs> it has got three levels. In first level, we have found in our India that our courts use uh, online hearing, various tribunals started as soon as COVID started. There. But it is not that high level of technology which we have seen earlier. Only we are using that Zoom or that type of platforms. For where only carrying on or hearing is done. For that also in uh, Hong Kong, uh, there is a platform. Uh, in Singapore, there are platforms. Uh, they use even blockchain to receive the, admit the evidence, store it, so that it can be straight away admitted as a temper proof. In the second step, there is technology process Augments the process of dispute resolution, so AI based dispute resolution is done. But there are judges or juries available which totally monitor the process. Like Madam said, that in USA, certain criminal 
decisions are decisions process by AI. But then there is a question of bias mm. based on because they act on past history. Say for example, in past decks have done a lot of crime, and why they have done why they have not done that much. So it, uh, AI will judge that if that person is there, there are chances of repetition. Mm -hmm. So they may give them more imprisonment for the same type of crime yes. than compared to white. So now editations are going on for using this. Mm -hmm. Same way happens in even HR when this type of software I applied. A particular job in past, there were no female were being employed. Mm -hmm. Now women are coming forward for all types of jobs. <laughs> so HR may do that software will check with the past history, it will say uh, you women are not suitable, they may be rejecting outright. So all these bias are to be removed from this software. In third level, based on blockchain and smart contracts, the decisions are taken automatically using the algorithms also on the top of it there. <clears throat> These are various dispute resolution from ODR. EBA has been considered as a, one of the pioneers in uh, online dispute resolutions because all over the world, eBay stores online buying is done by millions of people and about on an average about 3 to 5% of dispute arises in transactions. So they all worked out an online dispute resolution mechanism and it is based on blockchain. <coughs> PayPal is also similarly this. European Union has come out with an online dispute resolution platform. This was the about their ODR platform. If you are European Union citizen or you have bought anything from the any European city uh, shop or online platforms, then you can apply there. This is the entire process they have explained in 30 days you have to agree for a dispute. So you can approach the trader and how the entire process goes. The second line, civil resolution tribunal, they are also considered say, British Columbia Canada based platform. Uh, they are specializing, started with uh, property related and condominium type of, uh, like our cooperative societies type disputes. And like for rent or uh, rented property or uh, owner, uh, condominium, other owners, it does have disputes and that they started online. And later on, after amendment for motor, small motor vehicle related accidents and small other disputes, they have also incorporated in online disputes. So, even in India, we have been uh, now promoting more and more for going for mediation and arbitration. Uh, later on, arbitration will be mandatory as a first recourse, and then only you can go to court. Because court is now under very much pressure of uh, filing burden of uh, cases. Yes. <coughs> Uh, another platform is a viewers, which is specializing in divorce and family dispute related cases, which is also online. Let's go to smart This platform uses uh, various artificial intelligence and it provides, uh, accommodates other uh, platforms by selling and uh, other companies also have to come on their platform and utilize their services. They are doing job as a justice as a service. So this remediation, they are utilizing justice. Then smart settled products are there. Which are there. Various types of family resolution center, estate settlements and negotiation, e-negotiation exhibits and other things they are doing. This justice as a service is a new concept uh, like uh, Say for in India, there are so many super stock, for example, chain of stores, lot of dispute arises. If you cater to them by tying up with a such type of super stock type of company, that whatever disputes are there, put a clause in your invoice that if any dispute up to this amount, we will <coughs> refer to a particular arbitration platform and their decision will be final and binding. 
So then at the end of uh, every alternate day, you collect all the dispute details, <coughs> transmit to them. <coughs> Have your counterparty there for making payment to them on crypto. <coughs> you can pay, make a payment in fiat. <clears throat> and very next day, you can have a solution, automated solutions, and it will be binding on all parties. eBay is following the similar tactic, but it is on its own platform. So, for any disputes in external, environmental, related, clinical trials, what is their tactic? <coughs> Ibrahim is the platform I shared in the Hong Kong in the International Arbitration Center, where they use now AI and blockchain both for uh, processing as well as uh, for uh, evidence admission and reasoning. Arbitrator intelligence, I refer to the Catherine Rogers in the beginning about them so on. So it is her platform which take interviews because in arbitration, getting data is a problem. Arbitration outcomes and other details are kept secret in international arbitration. So how you can come to know for these own insights, how you can do that. So what she does is that after that arbitration is over, they give interview form. They take interview and provide them form to fit the details, which are keeping anonymity and then <clears throat> masking the data, they make a general decision. So, so which are the arbitrators available? Because the international arbitration stake is, you know, is very huge and wrong decision may cause a suffering to the organizations. What's the choice? They provide all the data about arbitrators and which was the case where what happened all these days no masking, but aggregate the data and provide insights. You come to know full details. When you buy the report, you get, get the full details just without naming other past cases and other things. But uh, you can have all insights and take a decision which arbitrator to step for your matter. But the award will not be given here. Only the information. If it is published, you can get. Like all judgments, awards are not yes. in Yes. These are full fledged smart contract based arbitration platforms. Clearly, it is one of the leading in blockchain based arbitration using crypto. In this demonstration, we're excited to share a new open law prototype we're calling OpenCourt. OpenCourt will, as we evolve it, make it possible to resolve disputes on the blockchain efficiently and in a decentralized way. You'll also get to see some new features of our upcoming API. Let's jump right into it and consider Shady Grove Motors, a modern car dealership that wants to sell cars on the blockchain using OpenLaw's blockchain compatible markup language. Here we see a simple demonstration vehicle sales contract, which would likely be much longer and more complex in the real world. You can see there are some blank fields in the template that can be used over and over. Now I'll show a rudimentary sales interface that uses OpenLaw's new API to seamlessly automate the contracting process, as well as a smart contract to mediate the exchange of value, in this case, Ether and the car, which is also integrated with the OpenLaw protocol and connected to our template. Let's go ahead and purchase a car. Now you can see the power of our new API to integrate with OpenLaw in this e-commerce site. Let's go ahead and complete the transaction by signing the agreement as the buyer. And later, Shady Grove Motors as a seller will sign. Now that we have a binding contract, it's time for the parties to perform. First, our buyer will fund the purchase, which will be held in escrow and not released to the seller until she confirms that she received the vehicle. 
shall not perform by sending ether to the smart contract that's holding the value between the parties. Good, the funds have been sent. And now you can see it's waiting for her to confirm that she's received the vehicle. But what happens if something goes wrong when she goes to pick up the car? Disputes happen all the time in the real world. And so we can expect they'll happen on the blockchain as well. Despite the contract, the parties may disagree about the legal terms. They may disagree about how the smart contract was supposed to operate. One party may fail to perform their side of the contract, which is what we'll demonstrate here. Or there could be a bug in the smart contract. Many things can go wrong. Coming back to our example, we'll simulate a dispute arising when our buyer goes to pick up her car. It's not actually what she wanted. One serious problem with smart contracts is that ether or value can get trapped in them if they aren't carefully designed. Fortunately, the party's blockchain enabled contract running on the open law protocol anticipated these problems. And with our prototype dispute resolution service, we're able to model common dispute resolution terms. The terms you see on screen came from JAMS, a very well-known alternative dispute resolution service. We copied and pasted their standard clause, which is freely available on their site, and only made some minor modifications to support our protocol. So now the parties can sort out their dispute and use an independent arbitrator from the JAM service. You can see a rudimentary new user interface for a prototype we're calling OpenCourt. Using this interface, our buyer can register her dispute. She'll enter her statement of facts here. We used the JAMS clause in our contract, so the nominee could come from their pool of arbitrators or a case manager, but OpenCore was designed to support any arbitration service. She can nominate the arbitrator by typing in his or her blockchain address here. Okay, now this is submitted on the Open Court Dispute Resolution Service, and the statement of facts was recorded in IPFS. Now we'll switch to the seller's account, but note the current balance of our buyer's wallet at this time as well. Having switched over to the seller's address, they can now register their statement of facts. And for this demo, they'll agree on the arbitrator. Now you can see that both parties invoke the dispute. And what's very important to note is what happened with the dispute resolution smart contracts we've developed. Importantly, the ether that was being held in the smart contract supporting the transaction has been transferred to the open court dispute resolution smart contract until the arbitrator can make a determination. Let's do that now by switching to the arbitrator's account. And now let's make an arbitration decision. You can see the arbitrator can see both party statements in this rudimentary interface. So we can see the buyer thought she was buying a car that she wasn't. And it appears that the seller understands the mistake. So the arbitrator's decision in this case is fairly straightforward. Return all the ether to the party to party one, who's the buyer, and nothing for party two. And now the arbitrator can also provide a statement. and submit. And now the funds are distributed. We believe this process 
or one substantially similar to it that complies with arbitration laws around the world should be just as enforceable as any arbitration award, except that it is now recorded via the The hybrid system, mm. which human intervention, not totally automatic, once more. Yeah, and the in this demo, we want to show an end-to-end -end demonstration of a user using the Contract Express document automation technology linked up to open laws, smart contract integration. We'll start with a promissory note example. So in a promissory note, somebody known as the maker will promise to repay money. But in this case, we're going to be exchanging a blockchain-based digital representation of a currency using a popular standard on the blockchain called ERC-20. First, here's an agreement of some legal text. I've highlighted some of the terms that have been annotated for Contract Express to use through its dictionary. We only filled out enough fields to get the demonstration going. The promissory note has quite a few terms to it. So we created a template with this example. Let's go ahead and go through the document creation process with the, with the Contract Express based template. It's a little squished here on my screen yeah. to fit it into the video. Now, one thing I want to come back to that you probably saw me enter, but I didn't explain is the maker's Ethereum address. If you're not familiar with the blockchain, then you can think of the address as somebody's bank account and routing number. This is how the digital tokens will be routed. So next we're going to save this. And so next I'm going to show you some middleware we built to integrate open law with contract express. So this screen is a user interface of the middleware that connects through Contract Express's API to our OpenLaw API. You can see that the document ID and contract ID are, are highlighted here, which are unique identifiers on the Contract Express and OpenLaw sides. By highlighting this entry, we can see that the contract also has a smart contract component, which is running with some placeholder text. And we can see that the answers that we were provided on Contract Express here, such as the maker's Ethereum address, are now showing up through this middleware layer. So now I'm going to scroll down and show you a little more user interface we built to reveal information that got stored on the blockchain. In just a moment, I'll show you the open law side that makes this happen. By entering the maker's Ethereum address that we talked about before here and clicking this button, we can see that certain information got stored on the blockchain. This information is available because of a browser plugin I have installed called MetaMask, which gives us a gateway into the blockchain. It's not necessary for um, the execution of the middleware layer, but it's just useful for seeing what's happening in the blockchain. And one thing I want to highlight is this line here. This token balance was run independently of the other queries and it shows that the token balance after the smart contract was executed is now this. So the tokens are the ERC-20 representation of whatever they could be. So they could be digital assets, they could be something like a stable coin, they could be real value, or they could just be an accounting value. Next, we're doing some thinking around how to integrate the smart contract components that we've already created on the open law side. The idea here is that, and what you can see on screen is that, from the Contract Express side, users would have access to a number of predefined and pre-deployed smart contracts on the blockchain that they can automate with OpenLaw and Contract Express combined. So thanks for watching. Smart contracts are normally coded contracts. So ordinary people, layman cannot understand. Even advocates may not be expert in coding. So that's why there is a question whether consent was granted and understanding of the terms and conditions was the same by both parties and even lawyers who were advising. So there is a question of a consent. 
the consent was given for the same thing in the same way. That's why there was a question on validity of smart contracts. Because people who are signing, finally putting the digital signature were not going. So to solve this issue, new system came like calling retardant contracts. Retardant contracts is a combo board <coughs> in which physical contract is generated. Both the party understands them, who explain them, and then it is converted into a digital format and then put into smart contract format by coding. The Apple project format, which I show you, it is done like that by reverse of physical contracts. <coughs> Closes, close by close, either entire agreement uh, template may be available. You can convert it to smart contracts. And then, when lower validates, then the platform, say for example, if it is a lease agreement platform, the uh, on blockchain, after uh, credentials and login, uh, uh, laser lazy is property owner to, uh, person who wants to take on lease. There will be one window for a police department to vet the person's credential who is taking on lease. And then both advocate as well as a uh, stamp duty department who has to issue the stamp always come on the board. There will be a mandate given for execution of a payment of stamp duty who has to bear as per the clause. Then his account will be automatically debited by the stamp duty to be paid and will be credited to stamp department. They will be clearance based on police clearance. That's contract will be then executed. The closes of triggering will be initial uh, security deposit to be paid. And then the rent to be paid, say, the contract is for three years lease. Then every year, uh, say, on 10th of every month, there is a payment to be made for advance. And then later on, at the end of each year, there will be escalation cost, 10% each year. So all this will be drafted and converted into code. And then no person has to take any action. All the main budgets are accordingly given, and all this will be automatically executed. So there will be no dispute, something person doing wrong. Even at the time, end of this termination time, <clears throat> there will be one oracle third party will be certifying and putting the okay that yes, property is in proper condition, he has been delivered. Please release the security deposit, then it will be automatically done. So, that way, a lot of disputes and automatic execution uh, reduces the time and execution process. So will the contract be also registered automatically? Yeah, that, but you think yeah, window should be there. For these other parties and all, uh, other these are also blocked. India land reports are now being converted into Jostan, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, even Maharashtra started. So that is a material. This is a platform which converts physical assets into digital assets and gets NFT for physical assets. Normally, NFTs are <coughs> Normally, NFTs are having some digital assets on the back of it. But person who is having that uh, original right, <coughs> right or something, normally artwork for some uh, celebrities picture and other things, so that may be originally owned by him. The person who buys that share, one of those particular kick by which he had a winning goal, or when Kapil Dev hit final winning shot, that bet has been signed by him and given to somebody. So that bet has been converted into NFT. But bed may be owned by somebody and somebody has bought that uh, NFT of that bed. So origin owner may be something different. And if it is an IP right, IP holder may be getting some uh, uh, royalty for that. And uh, periodically as may be drafted in the smart contract. Because NFT is also created through smart contract only. And automatic payment and whatever terms have been registered. And here, Metarium is creating entire digitally based digital assets are converted for If you want to buy a real world through digital, that also you can for Take you asset passport means the credential of the asset, what 99% credit or whatever. And all this is created. And then underground, which is Type and all this gold on some particular platform. Like in India, we, have, we can have access to various sub platforms of it, buying NFT. OpenSea is one of them. Some platforms have now started uh, accepting payment in fiat currency, also in Indian rupees. Like it in Ethereum, does it Ether only or other cryptocurrency, but in the exchange. So, real and physical gold, bullion NFTs are on OpenSea or <coughs> on tech, they have given for Metarium segments for buying that gold. Or any physical asset now you can convert and sell to an NFT. 
NFT is uh, how different from other cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies are fungible. Means every coin of Bitcoin or Ethereum, Ether are same. It is not different. But NFT has a particular uniqueness. You can't exchange it with somebody. Something else. Like as I said, I tell you example of a copy uh, <coughs> of So that can be only unique. You can't exchange it with something else. Then also in a uh, smart contract, there is a so this we started discussing, there are new developments under AI in blockchain, NFT, CBDCs, Central Bank Digital Currency. Because of popularity of uh, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum and various use cases, expectation of uh, general public world over was increasing. But because uh, there was a question that if cryptocurrency is accepted, there will be no control of a central banks and governments in various countries over the flow of uh, money in economy, and then even a sovereign power will be threatened if it is accepted as a money. So, including India, various countries have banned even China after doing airdrop of their yuan, digital yuan, uh, they have stopped the cryptocurrency made their illegal. So, that is a <coughs> Considering this uh, and exp uh, realizing expectation of people, uh, all the uh, major countries, central banks, most, uh, more than 80%, 80 com uh, countries, uh, central banks are now considering to go ahead with the uh, issue of central bank digital currency similarities. Even in our budget, finance minister has announced that in uh, one year's time, we have got a target of coming out with digital rupees. So then it will facilitate you to using on smart contracts and other things, no, you can have a usage of smart contract in India also. So all these are new developments to require us to do a lot of uh, deliberations and go in there. So we can have uh, some separate session on this. These are all including metaverse and other things are important. So we can conclude today's session here. Can we have some questions? <laughs> Later on, so in my email, you can collect the questions and, and okay. whatever platforms I have shown, you can have a uh, Rosie means it and find out something and if you want to ask on that further explanation, people can ask me. Uh, so can you please mention what is the reason behind uh, NFTs being sold at an expensive price in the market? It is a based on demand, supply and uniqueness. Even NFT may not be having that physical asset as a making of it. But there is a case, say, somebody has said, like Amita Bachchan ke saath ek photo, and you have got that photo and you are making it NFT or the last sort with some person. So it is having a unique value. It doesn't have the price, but a trace. And it depends upon demand supply. Mm -hmm. You may buy it as a one lakh rupees, last quarter of film Sole of Amita Bacha. And tomorrow it may not be having that trace and you may lose, uh, you may lose the money and may not have any selling value. Same happened for uh, this thing, uh, first tweet NFT of the Twitter sonar. Actually speaking, it doesn't have that much value it is. Even Indian startup uh, owner only, founder only bought it. Sambita, anyone from Nari Gursani Law College? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I think a couple of students were interested. George, if you want to ask, please ask. Just two questions. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, can I ask, ma'am? Yes, please. Yeah. So, uh, sir, you had said that uh, in AI, through AI, smart contracts can be enforced. So, my question is, is it tamper proof? Will the courts accept such contracts? And what is the legality of such smart contracts? Please come again. Yes. So, sir, you had said that uh, in through AI, smart contracts can be enforced. Right, sir? Yes. Yeah. So my question is, is it tamper proof? Like, can anyone tamper in that uh, smart contract and make that contract uh, a different one? No, and no, the no, second smart question. contracts are based on blockchain. Yeah, and uh, 
Smart contracts are um, once drafted in the regular physical form and language is finalized, it is digitalized and then converted into smart contract format based on close to close, uh, close basis. Then finally, in the real process, it is read out by the respective lawyers and both the party at least that we understand it, then only it is implemented. And then once it is put on blockchain, it cannot be tempered with it. Because blockchain's data cannot be tempered with Okay, sir. And my next question is, is this, uh, is there a legality for such contract? Will the courts accept? Yeah, in foreign countries, earlier, as I mentioned, that uh, there was a question of both the party understanding the terms and conditions in the same context. And uh, that was a question because they were not able to understand the coding. But now, because of the contract system type, Italian contracts, uh, this is possible. And in foreign countries, uh, these are accepted as a regular contracts. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Can we have a look of thanks? Good afternoon, everyone. It is my honor to propose a word of thanks and acknowledge the ones who put efforts to make this event a success. I, Rushi Jain, on behalf of the MRE School of Law, would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to C.S. Harish Chani, sir, your deep and intellectual way of imparting knowledge has added glory to this informative session. With a deep sense of appreciation, I would like to thank our director, Dr. Nilima Chandinawani, ma'am, Professor Soini Srivastava, ma'am. Also would like to thank Ajit, sir, for putting in efforts in making all the technical arrangements. I would like to thank the faculty members, non-teaching staff, and my team. Lastly, thanking all of you present here who made this event a huge success with active participation. I request you all to rise for the national anthem. Can we quickly have a group photo? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma